Good morning. Today is Sunday the 13th of February and it's the sixth Sunday in the Church's ordinary year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may, we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17. The Lord says this, A curse on the man who puts his trust in man, who relies on things of flesh, whose heart turns from the Lord. He is like dry scrub in the wastelands. If good comes, he has no eyes for it. He settles in a past place of the wilderness, a salt land uninhabited. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord, with the Lord for his hope. He is like a tree by the waterside that thrusts its roots to the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no alarm. Its foliage stays green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. The Word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If Christ raised from the dead is what has been preached, how can some of you be saying that there is no resurrection of the dead? For if the dead are not raised, Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, you are still in your sins. And what is more serious, all who have died in Christ have perished. If our hope in Christ has been for this life only, we are the most unfortunate of all people. But Christ, in fact, has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Jesus came down with the twelve and stopped on a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea from Jerusalem and from the coastal regions of Tyre and Sidon. Then fixing his eyes on his disciples, he said, How happy are you who are poor! Yours is the kingdom of God. Happy you who are hungry now, you will, shall be satisfied. Happy you who weep now, you shall laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, drive you out, abuse you, denounce your name as criminal on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice when that day comes, and dance for joy, for then your reward will be great in heaven. This was the way their ancestors treated the prophets. But alas for you who are rich, you are having your consolation now. Alas for you who have your fill now, you shall go hungry. Alas for you who laugh now, you shall mourn and weep. Alas for you when the world speaks well of you. This was the way their ancestors treated the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord The way the readings on Sunday work, it's traditional for the first reading and the Gospel reading to link quite closely. And somehow the second reading, often a, a series of readings from one of the letters of Paul, goes its own way. But today the three readings do mesh together very well. And it begins with the two stark metaphors that we find in the first reading. If you live in an agricultural land which does not have good distribution of water, you can see very definitely the difference between those crops, those trees that grow next to the river, a secure river that's always there, watering and the dry parched land of people who are trying to grow crops away from water and feed it with a little bit of water they carry from elsewhere. And it's those two images that both Paul and Luke pick up on in their in the readings, subsequent readings. So the first reading says, Happy the man who follows the Lord he will be like a tree and a, a, a plantation planted close to the river bank, always watered, always green, always hydrated, to use the modern term. 
But the man who looks at worldly things, who just wants to have a good time on this earth, is like a man who's living in his parched dry land. Nothing to offer, no crops grow. That's all the reward there is for those in terms of long-term eternal life. And the second reading from Paul is precisely about the, these two visions. Those who believe in life eternal, who will be like the people planted next to the river, and those who don't believe in life eternal, who have nothing but this world, which is dry land scrub. The Gospel is the Sermon on the Plain, unlike of Luke, unlike the Sermon on the Mount in uh, Matthew. And Luke, true to the whole style of his Gospel, is much more focused on concrete realities, the here and now condition that people have and enjoy. He's not talking about spiritual poverty, but actual poverty. And he says, blessed are those who are poor, who are hungry, who are struggling to make ends meet. They're having a tough time now, but they will have life eternal. They're the people planted on the river bank, always close to water. They will have life coming up through their roots. And then in contrast, the rich, the people who focus on the things of this world, they're the people who are, it's like as if they're living in parched dry land. They have nothing. And when they die, they will mourn and weep for what they don't no longer have because they haven't focused on the important things. So all three readings are prompting us to, to choose life, not death, to choose following Jesus according to the, the teachings of Jesus. Above all, being poor, even poor in spirit, by making the teachings of the next world the important pillars that steer our boat, the important pillars that support our position in life, and not to focus on just the things of this world, the material things that pass. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, we praise you, O Lord, and we thank you. Let us thank our Saviour who came into this world that God might be with us. We praise you, O Lord, and we thank you. We welcome you with praise. You are the day star, the first fruits from the dead. Let us rise with you to walk in the light of Easter. We praise you, O Lord, and we thank you. Help us on this day of rest to see goodness in all your creatures. Open our eyes and our hearts to your love in the world. We praise you, O Lord, and we thank you. Lord, we meet around your table as your family. Help us to see that our bitterness is forgotten, our discord resolved, and our sins forgiven. We praise you, O Lord, and we thank you. We pray for all Christian families. May your spirit deepen their unity in faith and love. We praise you, O Lord, and we thank you. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. To those who love you, Lord, you promise to come with your Son and make your home within them. Come then with your purifying grace, and make our hearts a place where you can dwell through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. Have a good week. May this Sunday be the beginning of a good week.